So, welcome you to Krishnakanta Hendrick State Open University and the the community radio service of the Krishnakanta Hendrick State Open University Gyan Taranga. Uh, this is the first community radio service of the Northeast and which is managed uh, by the university, but it is its programs are uh, basically run by the community, community living in the vicinity. So, welcome you sir and we are very privileged and we feel very honored uh, to have a guest of your stature among us. So, uh, let us uh, start with some uh, questions. Basically, our questions will be small questions but loaded questions and, and uh, this will be mainly dropping will be done by you only because people will like to listen to you not us. So, sir uh, and he is uh, the Dean Academic of the University he is with us, he is Dr. Am Arudhiti Choudhury and I am the Registrar, I am R. B. Mohanta, President mm -hmm. Varan Mohanta sir. So, let us first start with questions on your area of work. As we know the constitution in the constitution of India there is article 21 A to article 24 then directive principles of state policy and again we have plethora of laws and acts like the factories act of 1948, the mines act of 1952, child labor prohibitions and regulation act uh, this is 1986. Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Chi Children Act 2000 and again RTE right to uh, compulsory and free education to children Act 2009. <coughs> in spite of having the constitutional provision, in spite of having all these laws, uh, why uh, do you feel that some kind of movement is necessary for the protection of the child's right? Uh, is there any inherent deficiency in the constitutional provision or in the act or in its implementation, sir? Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate you for the community radio service. Thank you, sir. And it is my privilege and I feel honored to be here on the day when the great saintly scholar of this nation and of Assam, Professor K. K. Hendrick was born. Mm -hmm. So, today is um, his anniversary. So, I feel very humbled about it. To answer your question, let me tell you first thing in at outset that the constitutions are and laws are very important, but society is not necessarily run on the legal uh, frameworks and the constitutional guarantees and provisions. There are many more components in it. When we talk of child labor, child slavery, child prostitution, denial of education, sexual abuse of children, violence against children, these crimes are protected under various laws and constitution guarantees protection. But these issues are social evils on one hand, crimes on the other hand and thirdly they are also related to the broader economic and development aspect of society. So, when we talk of evils then we have to work with the communities to change the mindset set of the society where the people respect children, people respect childhood. So, dignity of childhood has to be ascertained by society and we as society, as community must realize that exploitation and abuse of children, denial of childhood is a social evil, it is bad and that has to come very strongly and clearly from the society. So, that is related to the changing of mindset of the people. Then I as I said it is a crime. So, we have to have good laws. Some laws are good, some laws are still weak. 
but more important is the enforcement of laws so that requires political will that requires strong monitoring that also requires the capacity of the monitoring and implementing agencies including the enforcement authorities so that's one aspect when i talk of capacity it means their training their orientation their accountability and so on but also the community itself must know about their rights in most cases when it comes to the children and women they are not aware of their rights especially the victims and survivors they have no idea that what are the constitutional guarantees which ensures and protects their rights they are not and community as whole does not care for those things so it goes on and on and on so the implementation has both the aspects the political and enforcement aspect from the government agencies as well as the social aspect where the people should be empowered about the knowledge of their legal rights so that is the second part and when it comes to the third part and that is the economic part is that until and unless in india or anywhere in the world if we don't have any an a kind of inclusive and equitable democracy inclusive and equitable development and guarantee of right to life with dignity which is the fundamental right ancient in our constitution that has to be translated into action in economic terms also where everybody is free from hunger malnutrition and um, some sort of fear of livelihood so that economic aspect should also be guaranteed so once we see the whole problem in a holistic uh, framework and holistic um, perspective then uh, we have to attack it from many corners i have been advocating for many years now it has been established um through many of the academic uh, um researches and uh, surveys and so on that child labor is not an isolated problem child labor is very directly linked with poverty and illiteracy but the general perception is that child labor exists because of poverty but for last 35 years i have been trying to argue that child labor also causes poverty and perpetuates poverty child labor also causes and perpetuates illiteracy where the illiteracy causes child labor so what i called a triangular relationship between illiteracy poverty and child labor these three things have to be tackled together because they are cause and consequence of each other they form a kind of chicken and egg relationship nobody can say that who was born first and who could be killed so every the entire spice you could be killed i'm not talking about that but this is a vicious circle and we have to break this vicious circle by way of killing all these three evils of poverty illiteracy and child labor simultaneously Thank you.